Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you the only things people cheer more than endings is entrances. What's up with that? Plenty of wrestling companies over time have learned to pair music and wrestling together, but nobody does it like the WWE. From entrance themes to hype packages, from the rock and wrestling connection through the Attitude Era, the right song makes a wrestler that much more memorable. The right song also makes a memorable wrestler into a flat out icon, to the point where fans get hyped just from the first three seconds of a track. Oh hell yeah, here comes Austin. Oh crap, here comes Bret Hart. Yeah, no, no thanks, I'm just gonna change the channel. Okay, I'm kidding about that last one, but it's undeniable that we treat entrance themes almost as importantly as the wrestlers themselves. Every once in a while though, a theme gets repackaged and ends up being given to another star entirely. Now today I'm not talking about those times where a theme's just recycled and given to somebody else. That'll be for another time. For now though, this is gonna focus entirely on themes that have been changed and repackaged before being handed to another superstar. So this is Freaks 5, wrestlers who used to remix of another wrestler's theme. Number 5. Rich Swan and Dakota Kai. Can you handle this? Can you handle this? The former Impact Wrestling World Champion took WWE's Cruiserweight division by storm in 2016, dancing and wrestling his way to the top of 205 Live before a domestic dispute with his wife Sue Young led to his release with the company. What most fans don't know is that earworm of a song that he would perform to actually debuted before he did, belonging to Evie, not the Pokemon, although she herself did evolve and eventually become Dakota Kai. First from Auckland, New Zealand, Evie! Number 4, Ezekiel Jackson and Bart Gunn. Bart Gunn was one of my favorites growing up. I don't know, maybe I just gravitate to Genetti's of teams. While Gunn himself failed to see the success that both of his tag partners would, Bart would infamously be known for winning the Brawl for All tournament that he wasn't supposed to win. In true WWE Diva Search fashion, since he was known as the guy who won the tournament, the tournament's own theme song was handed to him until WrestleMania 15's disaster against Butterbean. Nearly a decade later, WWE would debut Ezekiel Jackson as a heel Brian Kendrick's enforcer before giving him a solo run, becoming both Intercontinental and ECW Champion. His song would be an admittedly kick-ass track with Evan Jones on vocals, using an updated version of Jim Johnston's backing track. Who is in action last week on Raw, and he was involved in an interesting matchup. What you call domination, it's a combination uh -huh. of skill and concentration, so rise to the occasion, do something amazing, cause anything that I do... Number 3. Doug Furness, Phil LaFon, and Man Mountain Rock. This one's a bit of a weird case. In 1996, world-renowned tag team wrestlers Furness and Crawford, who went by his real name in the land that McMahon built, made their WWE debut and were a surprise hit, being made into stars in one single night at Survivor Series as they were put over by Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, and the New Rockers. Unfortunately, it would be a car crash while on the road and the subsequent drug issues that would put an end to their time in the company. Their theme song was actually an upbeat remix of a more commonly recognized track used one year earlier for Man Mountain Rock. And only a year after Furnace and LaFon were gone, Darren Drozdov would debut with the company not using their theme, but rather Man Mountain Rock's version. So the song was given to one wrestler, then redone for a tag team, only for the original to end up being reused for another completely different wrestler. Number 2. Jack Swagger and Lance Cade Cade is one of modern wrestling's tragic tales. The kid got his start in Shawn Michaels' training school not unlike Brian Kendrick, Brian Danielson, and Hernandez. Not unlike Michaels, he would get his foot in the WWE door as part of a tag team trying to help Mark Jindrak get out of first gear. He would win gold alongside Trevor Murdoch and finally start seeing some singles success in programs involving Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels. In 2008, he scrapped the country and western themes for a very Rage Against the Machine style track known as Soaring Eagle, until 2008 when he was fired. 
According to Jim Ross, he was let go for making a major league mistake while utilizing bad judgment. That mistake, by the way, was having a seizure while on a plane. A week after he was let go, his theme was given to the All-American American Jack Swagger, and one month after that, the track would be given lyrics thanks to a Rage tribute band named, and you can't make this up, Age Against the Machine. As for Cade, he would pass away less than two years later from drug intoxication paired with heart problems. He was 29 years old. Now before I get to number one, I do want to throw an honorable mention here because this one is weird, man. I was going to bring up Linda McMahon using the 1990s WrestleMania rap or the song made for Kurt Angle that was given to Zach Gowan instead, but this one takes the cake. So in another video I spoke about MTV and WCW teaming up to present Beach Brawl, which, because MTV had free reign to use pretty much any music they saw fit, allowed wrestlers to come to the ring using actual licensed songs. Perry Saturn, for this one-time appearance, came to the ring using Marilyn Manson's Beautiful People, a track as common in wrestling as titles won by Vacant. Ian Rotten also used it in Combat Zone Wrestling, but of course, it was most widely known for when the WWE made it the intro for the widely popular and decades-running iconic program, Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course, it was also synonymous with SmackDown, sure. But there was one man in the WWE who was worthy of using beautiful people. And his name is John Cena! I'm dead serious. John Cena's SmackDown debut against Kurt Angle involved him using a later part of Beautiful People, and I couldn't resist bringing that up. One of my oldest and dearest friends, Perry and I go back to high school. I'm telling you, it's about time he finally showed off the freak that he is. Since technically both Cena and Saturn used different variations of the same song, and at the same time, that song isn't recognized as a theme for either one of them. Neat. So with all that said and done, who's my number one wrestler whose theme was a remix of another wrestler's song? Number one, Drew McIntyre and Roderick Strong. Mr. Ring of Honor himself, the master of the backbreaker, Roddy Strong has had a fair few theme songs through his time in NXT. Whether he was in the Undisputed Era or the Diamond Mine, his solo runs before, after, and in between, his very first entrance theme on what used to be the Black and Gold brand had a serious and daunting sound about it. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Just in case it doesn't, let's add one single instrument. That's right, Roddy's original theme song was given some bagpipes and handed over to the Scottish psychopath Drew McIntyre when he rejoined the company in 2017. With the song Slow Burn, now renamed Gallantry, McIntyre would claim the NXT title and a couple years later the WWE Championship with a further remixed version of the song for his entrance. Unfortunately for Roderick, everybody he's ever been associated with since coming to NXT seems to have either been fired or renamed to Butch. But there you have it, five wrestlers whose entrance themes were remixed and given to somebody else. So I want to ask you, which versions did you prefer? The originals or the updates? Which one would be your favorite and who else can you think of that got an updated version of another wrestler's song? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more because I want you to be a part of this conversation too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so I want to thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.